What's happening, everybody? Okay, there we go. That's what happens when I read. Don't do prep. Bobby Gwynn, one of my Tallahassee people. Flip is with us. Flip is moving into that new office. I know he has got a bunch of work um, ahead of him today. So we are, um, we have a rainy Saturday Sunday here. I got back from doing a little uh, sanitizing route. Earlier, we finished up a uh, nice garage project. It was uh, a three-day garage project. Went over uh, this morning because we had to pull off a little bit early yesterday because of a um, BLM protest. I didn't want my guys downtown while that was happening, so um, I'm still going to call it uh, a three-day project. So good garage. Michael Wedge, what's going on, man? Um, then we got a little medical office building and a rare, um, house to do today, but it was a, uh, I don't call it, it was a, um, a death and, uh, the son's going to sell his father's house. So I was up town for a couple of days down at the beach with my grandson and beautiful wife and got a package in the mail. I'm struggling to open this thing right now. I was going to show you what I got. I mean, you want to talk about somebody just going off online completely wholly unprepared. That was about me whenever I started this in the video and I apologize. I like to be a little more prepared. And, uh, this freaking box is sealed. This is some quality shipping right here because they've got it glued and taped and everything. So, there we go. All right, there it is. I just ordered a case of 24 of these. This is one of these little secret weapon things that you should always have in your arsenal right here. Uh, blister packs of graffiti safe wipes from Urban Urban Restoration Group, but it's also known as World's Best Graffiti Remover. Um, those guys, uh, they are based in California, which I don't understand how they can ship anything toxic. Like their stuff out of California seems insane. Uh, ordered this. I told Ann to, to order this, I think, Monday or Tuesday. I was out of the office from on Friday, Thursday afternoon and Friday. They were there, so it took about four days to get in. Anyway, what's in the graffiti safe wipes is these little blister packs. Each one of those things comes with one, two, three, four, five, six of those in there. We keep these in all the trucks. And a little blister pack, whenever you open it up, it's like an orange oil or delimining uh, soaked uh, scrubby rag. It unfolds to about that big and perfect for removing graffiti, removing tags. Um, I've even been known to keep a couple in my pocket whenever I'm walking around with a property manager and we're looking at the you know, exterior of the building. And I'll say, oh, hang on one sec. Let me get rid of that tag for you. And you know, before we even start the washing, before we even put a bit in there. And it usually blows their mind whenever we do something like that. So just an idea. Um, these things are stupid cheap. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but they'll make you a lot of money and they'll make your life really, really easy to have. So all the, all the trucks ought to have graffiti safe wipes. And here's what the box looks like again. Graffiti Safe Wipes. And this is not a paid endorsement by them. Wouldn't know them at all, just something I use. Um, all right, so some people. Lindsay, how are you? Flip, what do you say in there? <laughs> yeah, just, I appreciate that. I, like, I do like to work hard. Um, I, love to, I love to provide for the family, but you know, something else. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in you make hay while the sun shines and you know, the sun's been shining us for a while. So we work really, really, really hard 
um, to, to, you know, to open this business and, and to get business and, and to have people call us. And, you know, I'm really appreciative of that. And I'm going to get out here and work my butt off and, and service these customers um, because, hey, this is my dream come true. You know, um, I love having this business. I love the um, freedom it gives me. I love being able to get out and about and have fun. And, and just I love my team. I love my spray wash family. Uh, our employees just just absolutely amazing so um, I am truly am living the dream so I'm a happy happy boy about it and you know it, it while I get tired and all it doesn't necessarily feel like work whenever you're, you're building something that you just know you love and that's 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 your your ambition and your desire uh, Burke yes this is to wipe on walls wipe on railings uh, little areas where people tag with sharpies or paint pens it's very very good for that it won't necessarily um, um, take off the underlayment of paint I wouldn't trust that on extra sensitive surfaces but um, it's not very good on rough masonry. I found that it gets real smeary on a rough um, a masonry scenario. Whenever you're trying to take paint off of that, you're going to take a little pressure washing. But on a smooth surface, a painted or metal surface, these things are the bomb, Burke. Um, Burke Allen asked if you're to use these on walls or not. So uh, let's see. What all was I going to talk about today? Well, Somebody had made a comment in, in the academy that uh, starting to see um, uh, a lot of used equipment out there. And, you know, I, I keep my nose pretty into this business. And I have a lot of people call me, reach out to me. Sometimes I'm, I'm able to get back immediately. Sometimes it's like a week or so. Um, it just depends on my workload. And I... Um, I, I hear both sides of the story. I, I hear, gosh, we're busier than, than we've ever been. And then I also hear that, man, my phone's just shut off. My phone's shut off in August and, and I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know, um, things are bad. I haven't had a call in two weeks. So I, I just I hear that a lot from both ends of the spectrum out there. And, you know, we all go through phases. It's a natural cycle. We, we found that, and I'm not even talking about 2020 because 2020 is, who the hell knows? It's just a freaking insane, um, insane year. But, you know, in a traditional year, I look back and my two slowest months are February and August, um, especially August with the residential uh, here in the, in the dirty, dirty South. You know, it's gotten so hot, I guess probably around a lot of the nation, people just stop going in outside so much. Also, kids are going back to school. Uh, you're either getting in your, you know, last vacation of the summer, which ne didn't necessarily happen this year, or you're getting ready for the kids to go back to school, uh, buying new clothes, things like that. Not as much disposable money around in August. I've always attributed the um, uh, slowdown in February for um, or to um, uh, holiday spending because in, in February now the credit card bills are coming in. So those have been our two lowest residential months whenever I go back and track all of our business. Now, commercially, honestly, February is usually, or I'm sorry, August is pretty amazing for us because we, we're, we're doing a lot of uh, stuff for education uh, and getting ready for, for school. So uh, another facet of our company. Uh, it's been good for us, but but residentially, if you've gotten a slowdown right now, there's probably a lot of people that are having uh, slowdowns right now. So just something to think about, not worry about too much. But, and here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the the but here. One thing I've noticed is. And the thing that I rail about on the, the coaches and the, the, the pay me money and, and let me do ads for you. And uh, y'all know my, my, my laugh, my joking about the $30,000 thing. And then people just, you know, wanting me to give the information away to them. I, 
I got a problem with it. Um, I really do because I can't tell you how much to charge for that piece of property. I can't tell you uh, what you should be charging to clean that roof. I just can't do it, guys. If you've never seen me talk before, please take this to heart. I can't do it. I'm in Florida. My bleach, I'm $1.25 a gallon. There's guys in this nation that are paying $4 a gallon on the reg for bleach. I mean, my bleach is much cheaper than gas for us. You know, it's just difference. You know, my, I have a lot more competition. I also get to work for 12 months out of the year where a lot of places, you know, they start up in March or they start up in April and they shut down in, in November or, or even October. So I'm getting a full 12 months out of the year. Typically speaking, in Florida, our prices for a residential property, just typically speaking, if we compare them to the average of, of anywhere in North Georgia and above, um, are lower, are lower than the rest of the world, They're, are lower than the rest of the United States. It's just how it is. It's an old joke about it in Florida, you know, for, for um, uh, trades, trades work. And, and it's not just for, for, you know, pressure washing, but in Florida, they pay you in sunshine. Kind of true. But going back to where I was talking about with the the, the, the guys that are that have business and don't have business and this especially is true with a lot of the the new guys that have come into the industry uh, the people that have started up this year and this is their first year and anyway here's what I was thinking about earlier and, and a line came to me while I was out on a sanitizing route um, and it was from Charles Dickens and it was uh, the tale of two cities uh, Here's the line from it. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was far like the present period and that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil and the superlative degree of comparison only. It's kind of what I feel like this year really is like and what our business um, is, is, is like as well, because I'm seeing that, that there's people out there who are saying, God, Ray, I am busier than I've ever been in my life. I, I mean, just this is this is insane. We're just crazy, crazy busy. And then I've got people out there saying, yeah, this is horrible. I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to sell stuff and, and, and find a, a job at this point because I, I, you know, I went all in on the pressure washing thing this year and uh, it's just not working out for me. So um, kind of kind of interesting in that respect. Um, but at the same time, is it interesting? I don't think it is. I think there's so many people um, that are out there. And keep in mind, there's no absolutes in life. There are very, very, kind of funny to say there's no absolutes in life because that's an absolute. There are very few absolutes in life, okay? There are certainly people, you know, Jake Benjamin, who I think of. I mean, Jake's such a freaking little go-getter. He started up, you know, the last couple of years, you know, just killing it, absolutely killing it. Um, other guys that I know that are, that, that, that are two years or, or new or three years or new in the business that have million-dollar companies out there. And that's so awesome. That is so freaking absolutely cool. I'm happy to see that. But then you go on to the YouTube or you go on to the 800,000 Facebook groups out there and you've got the guys who are trying to teach you a system or let you buy Facebook ads or try to sell you something. And those are the guys where I'm seeing that are, that are not doing as well because I think they're missing fundamentals. They're just missing the fundamentals of 
of the industry, the, the sales fundamentals. You're relying on this, this, this Facebook thing that we're on right here to, to uh, give us business. We're relying on the Google machine to give us business. We're relying on the, oh, I've got to be in the three pack, you know, up there. I've got to have high rankings which don't get me wrong, I guarantee you there's people watching me right now going, hey, I just scored a great job from, from a Facebook ad. But whenever all of this technology um, gets unplugged, the old school being comfortable with people, being able to sell yourself, being able to knock on a door and walk in or go up to the receptionist and say, Hey, can I see the manager? Hi, who's in charge of working, you know, on ordering your cleaning or, or you go and do that research beforehand. You'll never go wrong whenever you get those skills. And in fact, it'll kick the crap out of the online sales every time. It's the relationship building. It's the relationships where you get the great money. I was talking to, to Bobby Walker. I think I mentioned this a couple of days ago on a, on a or maybe a couple of weeks ago on a, on, a prod, on a podcast thing, you know, Bobby, he said he had looked back at his records and, and the, the sales that he had gotten from, you know, face to face communication were higher than a higher you know profit margin, a higher sales amount than than the people that that went up there through you know response a bid and 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 a filling out a request form online. John uh, John Orr is saying salesmanship is truly a lost art. You're right, John. It is. It really is. You know. And let's say you're horrible at sales. Maybe you hire a salesperson. Maybe you figure out your budget and, and, and hire a salesperson. Maybe you, you have some money and you pay them on a commission base. I believe Pat Clark does, does a lot of that. You know, they get commission for what they sell. But you're going to get a better ticket. You're going to get a more loyal customer. You're going to make more money in the long run by targeting and going out and selling something then you are just relying on the Google machine to, to hopefully, you, you realize that, I mean, you're, when you talk about targeted ads, sure, they're targeted, you know? I mean, I, I've, prime example of the targeting ads, I'm trying to think of a, of a good analogy here. I just bought a drone. I bought a drone last week, um, took possession of it on, Thursday, my feed, my, my ad feeds on Google, my ads on Facebook are all, all about drones now. They're all about drones. Newsflash, guys, I bought one. <laughs> so, so much of, of, of these ads that you're getting in here, and if that's happening to me, is is it's happening to you too so somebody has has talked about pressure washing you know the or, or alexa has picked up you know a customer saying pressure washing and then gets fed into to the google machine and, and they start targeting the ads on there so here this is five days four days after i bought my drone i'm still getting ads for the drone on there so i think a lot of these targeted type ads that we're doing out there have been sorely misplaced or we've missed the boat on that. And I'm not saying don't do it because I think, you know, a, a, a solid company has a little bit of ads, has a little bit of sales, has a little bit of marketing. There's a huge difference between ads and marketing. Please understand that most people don't. Um, it's really, you know, a, it's, it's, a, it's a jigsaw puzzle. It's not just one thing out there. Rick Nye says, every estimate is face-to-face, -face, never quote anything on the phone. Exactly, Rick. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, 
I can just kick the crap out of somebody if it's a phone based estimate. You know, we do it all the time whenever oh, I'd like a I'd like a I'd like a quote for my roof. Okay, well, fantastic. Uh, Ray will come out there and uh, uh, to the house. We'll drive by. You know, may not may, you know may not be able to meet with them, but we're certainly going to go and look at the property. Well, just give me a price. Well, no, I won't give you a price. Well, well, why can't you just give me a price? I mean, you know, I've called two other companies and they gave me a price over the phone. And I'm just like, you know, Mr. Smith, I don't understand how they can do that. You know, roof cleaning is, is first off, I don't know what condition your roof is in. I don't know if you're under pine trees or oak trees, if I've got a bunch of debris up there, do we have gutters? You know, the Google Maps that I'm sitting here pulling it up where I'm looking at, it, I don't have a super clear photograph of your house. And roof cleaning is not something that I can, I can just go on a square footage price by because every roof cleaning is different. You realize I'm spraying a pesticide, an herbicide on your roof and trying to keep from killing every plant on your property, just really a targeted plant. You know, I need to see if I have access to your roof. I need to see for my safety and for the safety of your property, is that roof going to be best walked or is it going to be best done from a ladder? Is it going to be best done from shooting from a ground? If I'm going to walk it, do I have a place to tie off on there? So there's really a lot of information. You know, do we have hollies out front as a hedge or do I have boxwood, boxwoods out on, as a hedge? Do you have mandina? Do you have roses under the drip line? There's so much of this that goes in to pricing your property. And usually whenever I get done telling them that, they're like, yeah, please come out. Absolutely. Please come out to my property. I want to meet with you because everybody else has just thrown a price off the top of their head. And nine times out of 10, I get those jobs. And I get it for higher than what the guy who threw the price off his head did, you know? And it might be un uncomfortable, but man, that's what growth is all about. It's like working out, you know, whenever you get that soreness, it's where you've ripped those muscles a little bit, you know, we, 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 we lift and it tears the muscles and it grows back and it causes a little bit of pain. Pain's okay. It's okay to get, to get scared. It's okay to get nervous out of your comfort zone. Kind of like it. You know, talk about butterflies in your stomach. Well, maybe it's, it's it, you know, every time I've ever gone up on stage or spoken or, or even maybe, well, not every time I meet with a customer, but, but it's okay to get those butterflies. They say the trick is to get those butterflies flying in formation. If you absolutely, if you absolutely hate people or just are so scared of that, join Toastmasters or get involved with some civic clubs where you can do some presentations. Things like that can really, really help you kind of build that skill a little bit. I see a couple of comments. Let me come in here. So Rick, we talked about that flip. He's saying face-to-face uh, -face salesman, Sydney Tapper. If you can't meet face-to-face, you're not getting a price. You can tell a lot from a customer and the way they take care of their residents. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Alex is saying he's glad this was said. I was kind of second guessing myself because I refused to give a quote of the biggest house I've ever went to because I wanted to go back and walk it with a customer, waiting to hear back from them if they wanted to make the time. Absolutely. Especially if it's a house that's outside of your comfort zone or a really expensive house or, or something. Golly, see what that customer's expectations are. Also, people like to do business that they with people they like. Build that relationship. Yeah. How much should I charge? Yeah, Flip. How much should I charge? Tell me how much I should charge. I don't know. How much does it cost you to operate? <laughs> because that should probably be your first uh, uh, thing in there. How much does it charge you to, how much does it cost you to operate? Because if you don't know that, you don't really know how much to charge for the house in general, do you? Things to think about. Certainly things to think about. You know, 
these companies and, and these coaches that are, that are promising basically overnight results that are promising you that you can do $30,000 a month like that. I don't know. You got to get the fundamentals down. You got to get your foundation down guys. Because I think we're seeing it right now in the world of the internet. If you start reading the, com the comments, if you start looking at the equipment that's for sale, people are realizing that it's not just as easy as putting a Facebook ad out there or paying a guy to go and, 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 and run you a proven Facebook ad. There's so much more to it than just that. So much more. And I'm not going to be one of these guys who sits there, you know, because we made this, had this conversation before. Oh, $30,000 is easy to do. Oh, everybody should be doing thirty thousand. No, it's not. As a matter of fact, $30,000 isn't easy. It shouldn't be easy. It should be a good goal to reach. Let me get my handy dandy calculator out here. All right, so let's say the average guy gets to work, what, nine months out of the year? So 30, 30,000 times, I'm going to back this up to eight months out of the year. 30,000, that's $240,000 a month. $240,000 a month. If you're working, I'm sorry, a year, $240,000 a year. If you're working eight months out of the year at $30,000 a month. I'm sorry. That's not easy. That's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. If you're doing it, congratulations. I'm, you know, proud of you. You've joined a pretty damn elite club. And before you get a big head, remember, there's guys doing 10 times that amount too. Not me. But there are people out there doing, you know, 10 times that. But $30,000 a month is very obtainable, but it's also a lofty goal. And you're going to burn yourself out and kill plants and just have a horrible time of things if you start out thinking, okay, I'm going to start out immediately doing that. You're also going to go broke if you literally say, I'm going to start this business up and immediately start doing $30,000 a month. Most likely, it ain't going to happen. Oh, I see Jacob Deal has joined us. Good afternoon, Jacob. I see you woke up here at the crack of afternoon. Jacob's been out doing a big package of uh, gas stations lately, so he's been uh, burning the midnight oil. Tyler Payton said, great advice, Ray. That's why I love this group. Flip. Say your hard charge a higher price quote, you need to build value, convince your potential customer why your quote is higher than your competitors. Absolutely. You're selling the sizzle, not the steak. Sell the sizzle. And Sydney said, what about these guys saying they're doing 10 house washes a day and doing them in 30 minutes? It takes me 30 minutes to prep the house. Sydney, I could not agree with you more. It is an absolute pet peeve of mine. If you're doing 30 minutes, 30 minute washes on houses, in general, you're not washing it right. There, I said it. I might make some folks mad about that, but you're not rinsing well. You're leaving SH on those properties. You know, that's a hallmark of, 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 of Doug, Dougie Doo, Doug Gore and my, you know, plant and property protection class. Water, 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 rinse, 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 rinse. We can show you about a thousand pictures of, you know, if you've ever taken that class. You know, of, of damage, <laughs> of damage on properties.
Sorry again, going off half cock because uh, I didn't want you plan on saying that, but I'm just answering the question. But you know, look at the oxidation on that right there. You can see that. Look at the oxidation on those window frames right there. Look at that. No, you are not. You are not um, doing your customers any favor if you're in and out in 30 minutes. You're going to be popping paint, oxidizing paint. When I say popping paint, I mean off the soffit, fascia area, whenever that bleach water rolls down in there and, and hits the electroplated, you know, white part of that and the water hangs down there at the edges because you've not rinsed all the salt water off. And that's the problem is that the damage that we cause a lot of times to the property, not necessarily to the plants, but to the property, isn't seen immediately. It takes a month, six months for that paint to start popping off. The people don't ever equate, oh yeah, oh yeah. Maybe it was a pressure washer that caused that. Or the windows, the windows don't fog immediately whenever you get hit it with eight gallons a minute at 3,500 PSI. John Orr said uh, one hour per thousand square foot on houses. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's a, that's a fair, um, that's a fair, a fair amount. Somebody else had, had, had just mentioned you know, 30 minutes to, to prep the house. Yeah, we're the same way. I mean, we're running around there pre-watering, taping up doors, taping up security cameras, taping up electrical you know, systems for a good solid 30 minutes before we ever start spraying. Yeah, and Alex, if you have any specific questions, have, have at it. Just I just kind of wanted to get on here and wrap a little bit and talk. Um, I was seeing those comments about, you know, it's getting tight for people. I wanted to give some, some words of encouragement, but also explain to some people why stuff isn't happening like it's supposed to be happening. <laughs> All right. So I was curious on the opinion of what the best form of marketing was. In my opinion, I'm using Facebook groups, Google, anything I can get into free at the moment paid for Facebook didn't feel like they'd get any better. Now, a lot of folks say that, you know, I would actually say that for the paid Facebook advertisements, um, if I was going to do that, I would, and I've boosted posts and I've paid for ads. If I was going to make that a mainstay of my marketing campaign and I'm not, uh, I would probably actually seek out a professional to do that for me because I'd pay them to do it. Uh, but I think you're on the, the right, the right track there. I mean, as far as, you know, get into the neighborhood groups, get onto Google, do the Google, my business. Um, you know, they say Google, my business is very, very important. Next door, look at the next door app, get active on there, get involved in some of the neighborhood groups on there. Hey, John, thanks for your comments. I appreciate you, buddy. I know John's a uh, long-term fixture in the washing business and uh, somebody I really like and respect. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, hey, Charlie, Charles Daniels, South Carolina. Rick saying three houses a day, any more than that, and the guys feel rushed. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's, that's about... Depending on the house, obviously, depending on the size of the houses, but that's usually where we're at with the crews. We're somewhere, you know, between either two big houses or maybe one big and two mediums, um, maybe four smalls. If I've got, you know, 1,500 square foot houses. Now we're going out and, and we're about to start a big package of, of about uh, 200, maybe 250 townhomes, um, you know, in that respect. And they're, they're, most of the townhomes are in groups of eight to um, either a six, sixplex or an eightplex, um, two story townhomes that are next to each other. You know, at that point, yeah, you know, one truck will be knocking out 12 to, to uh, 16 in a day. We're gonna work on two buildings per truck per day. Johnny Kimmel, how are you, sir? 
So Flip says, my techs have to walk the property, conduct a pre-inspection of the homeowner's present. The techs will walk with them. Then we got at least 20 minutes to pre-property. Yep. Once the job is complete, techs will clean up and conduct a final walkthrough. Absolutely. 100% or more satisfied. This can't be done in 30 minutes. Amen. Flip, I bet your techs do well on tips as well, don't they? I am guessing because... I know my techs are, once we, we got that through their th thick skulls, is not to hide from the customer, but to go out and do that outrageous customer service, the outrageous thing, and, and we, we, we teach the guys, you know, to do that. Their tips have just gone, you know, skyrocket. It's not uncommon at all for my guys to get anywhere from 100 to $150, $200 I've even seen in tips per pay period. Kind of blows my mind. Sydney says Facebook Live has done a lot for me because people see me. Yep. You know, the other other marketing. Uh, oh, I'm sliding here. So um, the young man was, was asking about, uh, you know, things to do the marketing, the free stuff. You know, part of the, the free marketing. Um, you know, your shirts, your uniforms, get out in public, be presentable, be approachable. Pass out your business cards at Lowe's. Hell, you want to get into some hardcore guerrilla marketing? Go up to Lowe's or Home Depot's, leave a stack of your freaking business cards there on the pressure washer aisle. So Flip's saying he gets uh, $40 per guy per day in tips. That's awesome. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. You know, other free things you can do to market? Hey, knocking on doors is free. You want the freest sense of ever freest source of advertising? Freest source of advertising you can get? Knock on a door. And I don't mean a residential door, I mean a commercial door. Talk to a property manager. Talk to a business owner. Talk to a business manager. Hi, I'm Ray with Spray Wash. I could not help but notice the front of your business was a little bit dirty. And you know what, Mr. Business Owner, in this crazy time right here of, of, of Corona, people are like completely heightened to their sense of, of, of dirt and things not looking, you know, perfect. And, and you don't want customers, you know, equating this, this algae growing on your, your, your front of your building with, you know, disease. We can get this cleaned up and have you, you know, the best looking business in the, in the center here. That's a real low cost form of advertising. Sydney, I'm the same way. I get a ton of business just being in Lowe's at Home Depot. And I wear my, you know, my sub jersey. And um, it's it's funny, I'll carry a business card, but some of y'all maybe have heard me before. I'll, I'll sit, she sit there and say, hey, you have a card with you? It's like, yeah, but you got your phone with you? Yeah. So I'll tell you what, I said, you're gonna lose my business card. Take a picture of my shirt, because it's got the phone number right here. And they'll sit there and take a picture and I'll go, and uh, invariably, I get a call back in a couple of days going, man, I am looking through my phone, or my wife is looking through my phone, and she's like, who is this goofy guy with two thumbs up? And he's like, oh, crap, that's the pressure washer. I need to call him to get an estimate. They would have lost my card. Also, get their information. Literally say, hey, I'll tell you what. Also, give me your phone number. I can call you later in the week. Hold on one second. What's your phone number? Bam, hit send. Say, great, you got my number now. Give me a call. And then you can go back. Whenever you're going back, a guy in Lowe's with slow eye save. Um, yeah, truck wraps. Yeah, our truck wraps do, do well for us. Oh, my gosh, our truck wraps do well for us. 
I wouldn't call that a free one, but. <laughs> oh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was out doing um, my sanitizing route. I want to talk about a couple of sanitizers. Again, these are not paid um, placements at all. I don't accept any kind of money for advertising, but whenever I find good stuff, I do like to, to bring it to y'all's attention. Um, I have been using two things in sanitizing. Well, three things. Exterior sanitizing, good old-fashioned SH, bleach. It's a CDC recommended approved treatment for, you know, exterior sanitizing. It kills the Rona. You can read more about that at Spray Wash Pro if you haven't joined. Take our sanitizing um, class over there. But, so this is Nixol. Nixol is, I don't want to get the name wrong, but it is a hypochlorous acid. I do not understand the chemistry of this. Smells like a very, very mild um, house wash. Nick Weisenberg, Perry Tate can tell you more about this. I understand it's very unstable. It's one of the reasons you don't see a lot of hypochlorous out there. This has been widely, widely used in the medical industry uh, for quite a while, and it is a disinfectant sanitizer. Uh, we put this in the fog blaster. It actually comes out, it fogs really, really nice. Uh, it doesn't hurt your lungs. Uh, you can walk into a fog-filled room in, in, with the Nixol, and you're not gagging and dying. Um, Good stuff. I enjoy using this stuff a great deal. Again, Perry Tate or Nick Weissenberg can, um, can give you information on that. We've done really, really well on the exterior and the interior sanitizing. Uh, part of the reason at Pro that, that we went and started doing that and doing the classes on that is back in March, whenever this Corona thing kind of hit, I told Tanya, I said, I want to do something to keep guys working. I want to keep, keep, do something to keep, keep our, our industry, you know, going. Um, and, um, just, just make sure that, that we have, uh, I don't want to see guys just stuck out there. And so, you know, we called ourselves essential services and we made some badges, uh, with pro and then a, a little, uh, made a, a, a class and a test about exterior, over at Pro, we've got reviews of some of the different foggers and misters out there. Uh, but again, Nixol, uh, good stuff to use. And again, hypochlorous acid um, contains 500 parts per million free available chlorine. I don't, I don't, and Nathan, I'll get to you in one second on that question. Um, what's the, the where, where was I going on? The, the one thing that, that kind of worries me about this and spraying around electrical equipment, because of that bleach smell and the chlorine in there, I'm not going to get right up on my electronics um, and, and soak them down. I would not want to cause and I don't have any proof that it would do this whatsoever um, it's just a concern that I have so I'm not going to get right up on a computer uh, in fact like most, most of my customers do turn their computers off I don't want the fans to suck any fog in there I wouldn't want any corrosion to take place with on the metal elements on there so um, just my thoughts on it. And again, I don't have any proof going, oh yeah, this, I'm not saying, oh, this is going to cause any, any kind of metal to, to oxidize or, or rust. I'm not saying that. It's just a thought that I had because it does have a, a very, very, very light, um, well, it says right there, 500 parts per chlorine, but this is also not high alkaline. This is an acid uh, based product, a very, very mild acid. I do not understand the chemistry of how you can do this, you know, how bleach becomes an acid. Um, look it up online, look up hypochlorous acid on there. But whenever you smell, it's, it's, it would be not even like a house mix, like 
Like if you took a, um, a 10% house wash and thinned it down by another 10 to 1 percentage, I mean, it's just the mildest, mildest, you know, taste of bleach in there. Not bad. But they've used this in the medical field for years. Um, my other go-to sanitizer Stand up for that one. Is the sand cube. This is made by Agent Clean Solutions. Uh, food contact, food safe sanitizer. Um, this is the uh, ammonium chloride or the, hold on, dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride. It's a quat. Quat is, is, the, is the, the typical name for this, the industry standard name, quaternary ammonium. Um, we use this. This bucket makes like 500 gallons. It's amazing. Uh, the stuff thins down so, so much. So I uh, highly recommend those two. This is Andrew Snyder. Or anybody that has the Agent Clean line of stuff, uh, you can get it there. Um, and then also the Nixall, uh, <coughs> Nick Weissenberger is where I would order that from. Another one that I've used, um, and I have absolutely no complaints with it, is uh, Mike Howard, Sergio Valdez's, uh, and they have a, a quat uh, that's a lemon scented quat. Um, that uh, um, uh, up in Savannah, Georgia at LMH. That's another good product, um, especially made for us. So, um, <laughs> only person I've ever seen taste test bleach. <laughs> well, I've sucked enough of it down in my life. Uh, I'm damn sure I can. It's it's actually kind of funny. I um, my nose just just doesn't work anymore after just well it does, but. I, I have a, you're around a certain smell for so long. It's like you get nose blind to that, to that smell. I don't smell strengths of bleach that much anymore. Like we, my guys could be spraying house or a uh, roof mix. And I'm like, what's that on? Like, you can't smell it. I was like, honestly, no, but I'll put my finger in there. And, oh, that's roof mix. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like a, a super, the mildest house wash you've ever tasted. Um, all right, so Nathan Burton said, don't mind sharing what phraseology do you use when discussing the service of applying sanitizer? Well, we talk about sanitizing. I don't say disinfecting. Disinfecting is a bad word. Disinfecting um, is talking about a standard of zero uh, germs whatsoever, whereas sanitizing is an acceptable amount of germs. So that would be the phraseology uh, that, that, that I use on there. And, you know, we also let people know, or let our customers know that sanitize is literally a snapshot in time. Sanitizing is one moment in time, not, you know, long time. And I know that there's some people out there that, that, that say there's, there's some stuff that has lasting, you know, uh, 24, 48 hour, you know, long-term kill out there. I don't use that um, because it's either one, not food safe or two, not approved for uh, the application method that I'm doing, fogging and or misting. Because it's real important to read all that really small, fine print on here and on the back side of the label, because if you don't apply it the correct way, per the manufacturer's recommendations and have the appropriate amount of dwell time, you're not really doing anything. Sydney said, when he comes home today and smelling like bleach, my wife is happy, happy. She knows money was made that day. Amen. Well guys, I am on here at 50 minutes at this point. So I am going to excuse myself um, and, um, sign off. Nathan, you, you said, uh, spend your hesitation with it. Want to make sure you label the service properly. You know, I invite you to, to become a member of Spray Wash Pro. We have a course, course on it over there. 
uh, where we talk about it and talk about the CDC information that's been given to us. Um, you know, you're also welcome to go to the CDC and, and look at it as well. Um, I highly recommend, you know, more so than the, the, my, my course that I've written. Um, um, you know, do your own independent research as well. Hell, we'll do it both, you know. I actually, in, in my class, I sit there and give you the links of where to go and, and go look for the information because I, I don't want to be the guy that says, well, they say this, but they mean that. No, this is what they say because I'm not going to, to screw around with, with um, trying to interpret what, what the CDC says. Anyway, you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time. Remember, practice those sales skills. Don't waste money. And uh, remember, sometimes it gets slow. Wash on, guys. <laughs>